it's my great honor here to introduce the Center for Drug Discovery to you. And Dr. Magic, actually, he's a center director, but he's not available today. But he wants me to say hello to all of you. Um, our center is located in the Neurological Research Institute, which is in the heart of Houston's Texas Medical Center. And the sixth floor of this building was developed for our center. And the second floor um, is used to place our 600 megahertz and 800 megahertz MRs. The vision of CDD is to bridge the gap between the academic research and the pharmaceutical discovery and provide researchers with an economical path to preclinical drug discovery. And to achieve this, one of our major platforms is the DNA encoded chemistry technology, the DACTEC. The DACTEC is a technology um, that um, uh, for synthesizing and screening of huge scale of collections of small molecules. The DACTEC library is um, built by conjugating small chemical compounds with short DNA fragments that serve as uh, identification barcodes. And what's amazing here is that billions of these drug-like molecules can be pulled together into a small Eppendorf tube that to be selected by protein molecules and further identified by next generation sequencing. And Nick Simmons, he's the leader of our chemistry team to build those libraries. And this afternoon, he's going to give a tour to our NRI uh, facilities. We have actually spent quite a lot of money uh, in building up those libraries. And so far, we have 34 libraries, which is 3.5 billion unique compounds. And most of these libraries actually they start from different chemical scaffolds, cores, and or building blocks. So that to increase the diversity of our library structures. And these libraries, they can be pulled together and be screened together. And we, have, we, we actually have an active screening process in our center. So every month, we do two sequencing rounds. So the duct tech process is actually a, a teamwork effort. So the Dell chemists, they actually they build those libraries. And these libraries, they can be pulled together and be incubated with uh, recombinant proteins produced by our molecular biologists. And then the selection scientists will pull down those proteins to collect the binding compounds and do next generation sequencing. So our chem informaticians and bioinformaticians will decode the sequencing data to identify the structures of those binding compounds so that the synthetic chemists will synthesize those compounds of DNA. And then these compounds will be further validated in in vitro um, assays by our biochemists. And then our analytical chemists and uh, sorry, our structural biologists and medicinal chemists, they can optimize those structures for final in vivo studies. Thus, CDD has personnel with different expertise. We have chemists, biochemists, chem informaticians, sequencing specialists, computational chemists, and analytical chemists. And adding all these different expertise with our various resources, like Damien's, um, Damien Young's fragment screening platform and Conrad's parallel synthesis platform, CDD is competitive in early drug discovery. So we have generated some collaborations with researchers in Texas and also from other states. And working, we are working on a broad range of disease proteins. Um, we, we, um, because we spend quite a lot of money on this, so the duct tech screening is not offered as a core service. Instead, we consider it as a 50% to 50% collaborative partnership. And finally, I want to end with a you know, proof of principle study using BRDT. BRDT is a male contraception target. So we have purified this protein and validated that the DNA conjugated JQ1. JQ1 is a non-BRDT target, BRDT binder. We found that the DNA conjugated JQ1 can be 100 times more enriched by BRDT pulldown as compared to those control experiments. And actually, on the right, this is a typical duct tech screening experiment, including three conditions. We have first, the no target control, there's no protein. And second, we have BRDT incubated with the library. And third, we have BRDT incubated with the library plus JQ1. Because JQ1 binds to the bromo domain, so it can block those binders uh, from, uh, from the library to serve as a negative control. And the data here shows that, well, the enrichment uh, um, from BRDT selection can be 100% inhibited by the presence of JQ1. And our BRDT compounds have been validated by in vitro assays and also by our in vivo animal models.
Thank you.